Hey, what's up guys? It's the new sensation, Big O Notation here. And today I'm gonna be bringing you a Janemba Mill deck profile. So yesterday I actually participated in Fight Night 5, um, which was, there was very little time in between Fight Night 4 and Fight Night 5. I think some of my more recent videos have been on Fight Night 4, reviewing some of my games and going over the decks that I played. Um, but for Fight Night 5, I think there was only about two weeks in between um, because they, um, DBS Deck Planet actually ended up hosting it rather than the normal um, Dragon Ball Super League, I think it's called, normally hosts it. But DBS Deck Planet got the privilege of being able to take over and they ran Fight Night 5, so shout out to them. They did a really good job of running it. It was really smooth. The commentating was really good fun. Um, it was all a really good event. But for my decks that I ended up taking, as I've mentioned in my other videos, the Fight Night events are a very interesting spin. So you only play one best of three um, in the entire event, so you don't have to worry about sitting there for eight rounds playing games, and it's not really mentally taxing at all. You only play one best of three, but for each uh, separate game in the best of three, you play a different deck. So you have to bring three decks with you, and the idea is um, people can bring their more fun decks rather than just their meta decks and part of the reasoning behind it is that you can't just play like the best deck at the moment or one of the best decks at the time and win the event from that you have to um you have to be good at a wider spread of decks which is a really interesting idea i really enjoyed it um i think it's a great idea and i'm definitely going to be entering some more of the fight night events in the future if i can so for my three decks that i took I decided to take a little bit of a fun spin on it and I kind of brought a theme across all three of my decks because I ended up taking three mill decks. My three decks were Janemba mill which is what I'm going to be profiling now, um, my slug mill deck which if you've been paying attention to the channel at all recently you know I've been loving the slug mill a lot. I've been prof I profiled it in one of my recent videos and I've also profiled it back in set 12. Um, I probably won't do another profile on that just because I've done a lot on Slug Mill recently and because it was almost exactly the same list that I took to the last Fight Night event, which I did a profile on then. Um, there was only one card difference. I tested one of the Oceanus Shenrons, the new card from set 14, uh, in there instead of a copy of Sacrifice, and I didn't even end up seeing the card, so I don't know how it went. Um, I'll have to do some more testing with that. But... I took Janemba Mill, Slug Mill, and my third deck was the new Sin Shenron Mill, which I managed to get all completed uh, just in time for the event. They literally arrived on the same day as the Fight Night event started. So that was really convenient for me. Um, you know, I love my Sin Shenron. I got the Sin Shenron mat. Um, I played in the card market event with the yellow Sin Shenron, and now I'm going to be building black Sin Shenron. Um, and I managed to do pretty well overall. I'm really happy with how I did. Um, I made a couple of mistakes, but I'm sure I'll get into those at some other point. I'm planning to do a review of my games like I did for the last fight night, so stay tuned if you want to watch that. And I'll also do a deck profile on my Sinchan Ron Zeno stuff, so subscribe if you're interested in any of that. You can stay updated with all of the new stuff on the channel. But that's enough from me now. We'll uh, get straight into the deck profile. So... For those that don't know, this was actually one of the first um, leaders that I ended up playing and probably the first deck that I would say I played consistently when I first started playing Dragon Ball because I started playing when this leader was uh, kind of running the meta. Um, and I'm a massive fan of mill decks. I love mill decks. I used to play mill decks in Final Fantasy. I used to play a bit of mill in Yu-Gi-Oh as well. So I'm a really big fan of mill decks. So when I heard that Dragon Ball had, was a game where there was a mill deck running the meta, I had to start playing. And so I started playing Janemba. I haven't really played it much since then. And I thought I'd get kind of bored of it if I did play it again. But I actually found this deck really, really fun to play during the Fight Night event. It was really interesting. And I'm definitely going to be tinkering around with it a lot more and coming up with some different builds in the future. But for those that weren't playing around in the time, um, Janemba is a 10k leader and he has a permanent where you can't include cards with 5 cost or more in your deck. So that's really restrictive. Uh, you can only play 4 cost or less cards in the deck, which is really annoying because you can't really run any of the secret rares except for Heroine's Lineage. And you can't run cards like the new Oceanus Shenron. You can't run any of the really uh, big mill cards or big stool cards in the game. 
uh, and then the rest of the front side is really really simple when he, when he attacks you draw one card and then your opponent mills two cards from the top of their deck uh, so it places two cards from the top of their deck into the drop area and then when you awaken at four or less you untap two flip it over uh, on the back side he maintains the same attacking auto of drawing one and milling two uh, for your opponent that is your opponent mills the two and then he gets an extra auto when this card is attacked once per game you can place a blue card from your hand into the drop area and negate the attack so he has a built-in negate in his backside which is really nice but the other than that the leader is really simple the only thing to really watch out for with it is that you can't include five cost or more cards in the deck and just make sure you remember that you have that negate on the back side because if your opponent goes in for their last swing of for game and you have that negate live oftentimes you might forget it and it's uh, quite important especially in a mill deck just having one extra negate is really really nice for the deck uh, so for my unison of choice i was running three of the margin boo unison and i actually ran one of the gotenks unison as well uh, the Majin Buu Unison is massive, massive MVP of this deck. You want to be slamming this turn four every single game. Um, I wasn't running four of it because, first of all, I think that four is incorrect for most decks because it's such an expensive card. And once you see one of it, you're generally not going to need another for the rest of the game. Um, but also, I didn't own a fourth, so there's that as well. I'm kind of excusing myself for not even owning a fourth copy. Um, but I ran the Gotenks as well, just as in case I didn't see the Majin Buu Unison, it kind of helps with getting a bit more defense. You have a blocker in the Gotenks, you can minus two to draw two. And the main reason that I ran the Gotenks was just uh, some barrier removal, because this deck has no barrier removal. And if I'd seen this during my Fight Night event, um, it would have actually come in really handy, because I was playing against a blue Gogeta deck, so that deck had quite a few barrier cards, uh, like the six drop red blue Gogeta guy. He was slamming down quite a few barriers on me uh, but the Majin Buu is great you get some draw power this deck really lacks draw power especially in the early game because your leader only draws one uh, every attack and it doesn't even draw two on awaken so you kind of need to supplement that with main deck stuff that will help you draw cards so the Buu is just really nice draw power and good removal acts as a blocker just really good defense and defense is what you really want in a mill deck so because we're playing a mill deck we want to be going for the long game and to help with that i'm running a couple of floodgates i'm running two of the heroic prospect trunks and i'm running two vegeta ready to rumble um, vegeta obviously being the more impactful more expensive negate and then trunks being the cheaper one especially when you have the unisons down uh, it becomes a one cost so that's really nice um, I'm kind of considering upping one of these to three. It kind of depends on what the meta shapes up to be because we're at the start of a new set, so we kind of have to wait until we see what the meta is going to be like. But if there's a lot of going tool decks, I'm probably going to want to um, run an extra copy of Trunks. And especially if there's a lot of going tool decks that are really aggressive earlier on. Um, but if, they're, if the meta shapes up to be a lot more mid-range stuff, uh, then I'll probably up the Vegeta count because Vegeta is more expensive, but it's more impactful um, in terms of energy cost it is. And the Trunks is much better against going tool decks like Dark Broly. The Trunks is massive MVP. Uh, but against things like maybe King Vegeta, where the maximum energy cost things they're playing other than an Overrealm might be the three cost maybe. Like three cost Vegetas would probably be the most expensive stuff they'll play. Uh, the Trunks doesn't really do much against them, but I'd probably, for now, I'd recommend going three Trunks and two Vegeta and maybe cutting a card down the line. Um, but it kind of depends on how the meta shapes up. I'm only saying that because once you have a Unison out, Trunks is a one cost negate, and so it's, it's just nicer. Um, and Trunks is going to do stuff against all decks, whereas Vegeta, a lot of the time, you won't get to turn four. Um, but they're, they're both really good floodgates for the deck, obviously. You want some good floodgates in this deck and this deck has a, a massive amount of defense in it because you already have your win condition built into your leader with the mill plan uh, so you just kind of have to play around surviving and you're okay to win the game just by milling 
So for some more defensive stuff, I'm actually running a blue-yellow package in here. This deck is uh, blue-yellow, as you can <laughs> kind of tell. Um, but I'm also running a Bojack package because a lot of the good cards for Janemba in the blue-yellow package are Bojack inherently. So it kind of became quite convenient to just run a Bojack package in with the blue-yellow stuff um, because it was already a really nice fit. So this Bojack is a little bit older. Um, I know a lot of people have been running a blue-yellow package with Bojack stuff recently with the new Zamasu card that's completely nuts, by the way. Um, so that's kind of the take I took on this deck as well. But this Bojack card is probably not as popular now, but it was popular a little while ago. Um, and it's I think it's really good still. People really underestimate this card. Um, but it's a blocker. It's a rival for blue-yellow for one yellow energy. Uh, that's quite tricky for this deck because you mostly want to be charging blue so that you can slam down a turn 4 boo unison as soon as possible. But we have a few um, check lands in the deck that are really, really helpful to get you to that stage. Um, and then, so he's 20k blocker and arrivals for blue yellow for one yellow. And then when you play him, you get to rest one of your opponent's battle cards and mill a card from your opponent's deck. So this is obviously great because it progresses the win condition of the deck and it helps stall out further because it can tank up two attacks by itself, one with the blocker and one with the rester card. And because it's 20k, oftentimes it won't die from the blocking attack, so you can reuse it over multiple turns, which is really nice. Um, and with this version of the deck, it does have the potential to go aggressive and try and kill your opponent if they're taking their own life enough. So just having a 20k body is really nice for that as well. Um, for some of the other Bojack cards, I'm actually running four Bojack Pinpoint Onslaught. Um, I'm mostly running this card as a check land. So he is blue yellow and he has energy exhaust. But if you have a Bojack Brigade card in your energy, he becomes a free combo card, uh, only 5k combo, but he becomes a free combo card for arrivals, which is really helpful for this Bojack. And he also negates his energy exhaust in all areas. So as long as you have a Bojack card charged, he just becomes free combo fodder and free arrival fodder. Um, he has some other skills like reducing the evolve cost of a Bojack card in your hand, but that's not relevant to this deck because you can't run the uh, evolve cards for in Bojack because they cost more than 5 energy, so you can't run those. Um, one of them costs 8, and I think there's another Revolve Bojack, but he's more expensive as well. Uh, and he has another effect where if you have two or more uh, blue or yellow cards in your combo area, you can play him from your hand as an activate battle using either a blue energy or a yellow energy. And then you give all of your Bojack Brigade cards in your battle area plus 5k power for the turn. So it's nice if you're going on the aggressive, if you're against um, a deck who's taken themselves down quite low. And you can just drop him to uh, get an extra 20k body out and buff your board by 5k for the turn. But mostly you're just using him for the free check land and for the free um, arrival fodder. So for some more Bojack cards, we've gone with 4 Bojack the Evildoer. This is the best Bojack card you can run in the deck because the 8 drop is, uh, you can't, it's unavailable for the Janemba leader because of the permanent, it costs more than 5. And a lot of the other Bojack cards require you to have a blue Bojack Brigade leader to combo them into play. Uh, but this guy, he's completely generic and he's 4 cost and he offers you good removal and a 20k dual attacker if you're going on the offensive. Um, just really great. Uh, you want to be charging these a lot of the time because you have Galactic Buster in the deck which pulls them out from energy and because if you have this guy in energy this guy becomes um, zero combo cost and he negates his energy exhaust. So oftentimes turn one you want to be searching for this card so that you can charge it and then turn two you want to search for this card and charge it and then you have your blue yellow energy and you have a blue energy. And that will make cards like Zamasu live. It will mean that you have the ability to use your draw apes, um, even though that you've just charged a multicolor. It's just really, really convenient for the deck. And then this Bojack is obviously great, as you will probably uh, notice in the coming meta. I reckon that Soul Striker with the Bojack package is going to be ridiculously strong over the next coming months. But a lot of blue decks are running this sort of package, and it makes sense, it's really strong. And I just figured I'd slot it in here because it's a great fit. Um, for our final Bojack cards, we're actually running three of this Bojack as well. He's Bojack Pirate's, Parade, uh, Pirate's Pride. 
Uh, he's a 3 cost 10k, negate. He has a counter attack, negate the attack and play this card. Uh, but during your opponent's turn, if you have a blue and yellow multicolor card in your energy, he becomes a 1 cost. And he has an auto. When you play this card, your opponent mills 1. So this is mostly used just as a 1 cost negate and it mills a card as well, which is really nice. Uh, it's similar to the other Bojack, the 4 drop, Arrival. Uh, just helps with stalling out the game and progresses your win condition as well, which is really nice. And a 10k body isn't too bad. Um, another a nice thing about this Bojack is that if you don't see your 4 drop early on, you do have the um, you do have the option of charging this Bojack, and then that will negate the energy exhaust of this Bojack as well and the combo cost. Uh, the only problem with that is that it means that you have a mono yellow energy stuck in your energy and that means that you're going to have to wait an extra turn before you can drop your boo unisons and that's quite detrimental to this deck because the boo unison is kind of the way that you're able to stall out the game long enough to mill them out and it helps you with so much with your hand advantage so i'd recommend only doing that if you really really need to get the energy down and get multicolor stuff going but most of the time you see your four drop bojack in time uh, just to be able to charge that instead and you can even charge your blue yellow bojack and it will it will do the same thing it will negate the energy exhaust and negate the combo cost as well so you can kind of take your pick between those two if you see either of the two four drop bojacks you're fine um, the only issue with draw with charging the arrival bojack is that obviously it has its own energy exhaust but that's fine because it only sets you behind with one energy and unless you're against an aggro deck, that's not going to matter a huge amount most times. Um, to round up the Bojack package, we have three Galactic Buster. I think the only target in this deck for Galactic Buster is the four drop Bojack, uh, the Evildoer. Um, I don't believe because it only target it only lets you target a mono blue battle card in your energy, so you can't target your blue yellow cards. And most of your other mono blue cards will have zero combo cost. So that's quite important to note. You can only target the Bojack Brigade. And that's why I'm running three. Uh, because we only have four targets in the deck being the Bojack, the Evildoer. But this card is obviously really, really strong. Uh, you can combo it offensively just to apply some pressure if you really need to. But most of the time you're going to be using it defensively on your four drop bojack the evildoer because it offers you 5k combo it offers you a draw it offers you a free energy and it offers you the removal on the bojack the evildoer's auto and something that's also nice about this is we have quite a few mono yellow cards in the deck so if you're dropping galactic buster and comboing in a bojack the evildoer then you all you have to do is combo one of your yellow cards and a lot of your yellow cards we'll see later you need in the drop area anyway um then you're able to just arrival stuff in as well, like the 4-drop Bojack that we talked about earlier. So going to the uh, combo step with this deck is actually not a problem. It used to be a massive problem for Janemba. You wanted to just run a bunch of negates and not go to comboing at all. But with the Bojack stuff and the arrival plays that the deck has, I think that going to a combo step is actually quite beneficial for the deck a lot of the time now. Um, to round up some of the multicolor stuff, we're of course running four of the new card, the Zamasu the Eliminator. This card is completely bonkers, like it's really ridiculous. Um, it has counterplay where you play this card and then if the card being played has an energy cost of four or less, it's returned to its owner's hand instead. So this can hit unisons because it only says card. Um, it can hit battle cards that cost four or less. This card is ridiculous. Um, and then if that weren't enough, it has an on-play auto where you draw a card and rest a battle card. So not only are you going to be able to counterplay a card, but you can also draw a card and rest a battle card. So you can effectively stop two potential attacks and any skills that the card being played might have had. Uh, as well as drawing a card, which is incredibly powerful for a mill deck. And this is the reason why, this is a big reason why we're running the Bojack package. Because having a blue-yellow energy live turn 2 and having... And being able to meet the conditions to play this card turn two and so having this card live is super super important because it can stop so many early game plays just by being able to drop this stop a card coming into play rest a card draw a card and then if that weren't enough for the card uh, it has indestructible which doesn't 
matter huge amounts but it does just mean that you have guaranteed one cost 10ks floating about on your board that you're not gonna need to worry about getting rid of but on top of all of that stuff it's also a check land so if you have another blue yellow multicolor card in your energy it comes in your energy without energy exhaust which is ridiculous um they just printed so many different effects on one card and made it two cost and it's it's really really insane and is really good for the deck um there's nothing really i need to say about it it's just ridiculous for our super combos of the deck i've gone with four of these amasu sacred disbelief um this just helps with arrival plays it helps with stalling out the game because you get to rest battle cards uh i wouldn't switch this out for anything i don't think you could run Zeno super combos and switch out your energy with the Bojack stuff, but because I'm only running four of the Evil Doer Bojack, and you can't run the eight drop, um, and you can't really run many of the other good Bojack Brigade cards because they require a Bojack Brigade leader, um, I wouldn't recommend because of all of those reasons. I wouldn't recommend running the Zeno super combo because you don't need to switch out your energy as much as you would in a Bojack deck or in a Soul Striker deck. So I think there's the Masu the Sacred Disbelief is fine. And it means that you have, um, you pretty much always have your arrival plays live. And between having this card and the Bojack free combo card, um, where is he? The pinpoint onslaught, because this is a free combo as well as a free energy exhaust uh, negation, you effectively have eight different free combo cards that are multicolor that will allow you to access arrival cards really easily. So, yeah, the, that's the reason I chose the Zamasu for the super combo. Uh, going back to some of the multicolor, uh, multicolor, going back to some of the monocolor cards, um, I decided to run three of the draw rape and one of the new draw rape. Um, I only owned one of this card, which is why I chose to only run one. Um, like I mentioned earlier, something that this deck really, really struggles with is early game draw power, and so these cards are going to massively, massively help you with that. Um, especially the fact that your leader is an untapped two leader so if you have spare energy lying about you can just tap two for your draw ape uh, and then you can immediately awaken on your awaken turn and then untap the two energy again so that you can continue making plays these cards are really really good uh, the reason that i was running one of the new ape and three of the old ape is because i figured the old the new ape is a lot better against aggro because you want to keep a lot more energy up against aggro um, whereas the old ape is going to be tapping two rather than tapping one. This ape is exactly the same as this one, except that instead of tapping two to draw two, you tap one to tap one, uh, to draw one. So this is just a lot more flexible. Um, in a more aggressive meta, I would maybe consider upping this to two. Um, but I think that three of this old ape worked out fine. I, I honestly, I don't know, I don't know about upping any of the ratios on these. Um, I would consider going like 4 and 2 or 3 and 2, or even just 4 and 0 in a really, really slow meta. But I think that uh, this ratio worked out absolutely fine for me. And yeah, I think I'll definitely play around with the ratios on those cards. Something that is also really helpful about them is they're, they're going to be really helpful for your arrival plays, because if you're comboing in... Bojack the Evil Duel or any of your other mono blue battle cards, you can then just combo in one more, which one of these apes. You can combo in one of these apes, and that will allow you to access arrival conditions, and it will get these apes into the drop area, which is where you want them anyway. So the apes are really, really good, and because of the inclusion of the apes in this deck, along with the Margin Boo Unison, once you drop the Margin Boo Unison and you can start paying energy for these apes without having to worry because you can just untap them with the unison later it's uh it's really really ridiculous and i think in my fight night game because i was against another blue deck i managed to get to something like a 15 card hand which in janemba is really really impressive because you don't draw that much inherently off of your leader or anything uh and you don't have very many archetype cards that actually draw you cards as well uh, or not for cheaply at least anyway but yeah once you get the boo unison down you're very you're in a much more stable position against most decks and that's when you can start using these apes to start filling up your hand again um, oftentimes turn two if you don't have the zamasu in hand you can just tap two for the ape um, and then turn three you can start using the apes as well if you're against control decks using the apes early on is not going to hinder you at all but yeah they're really really strong for the deck i definitely recommend using them 
Um, for the actual Janemba cards in the deck, I was only running two of the AOD Janemba. So he's a four drop critical 20k. Uh, there's no way to cheat him out in the deck at all. Um, he, you have to hard cast him for four. Um, when he comes into play, his auto triggers where at the end of the turn, you switch one of your energy to active mode. What's really nice is this doesn't restrict you to mono blue energy or anything, so you can untap a multicolor, which is uh, a lot of the cards in this deck actually require you to untap mono blue, um, such as the Margin Boo unison on the plus zero. You have to untap mono blue with the unison, so you have to watch out for that in this deck as well. Um, but this allows you to untap a blue yellow, which is nice, and then he has an activate main. You warp him, you draw a card, and you, your opponent mills three. So oftentimes you're just tapping four for him, guaranteeing the untap. Sometimes you swing 20k crit, but if you think that they can remove it during the battle, uh, you don't swing 20k, 20k crit, and you just immediately warp him. Um, and then you get a draw one and your opponent mills three. I kind of wanted to up this to three or maybe add some of the reality vendor Janembas in here as well. Just because they can come in for one cost. But I figured with the Zamasu the Eliminators because they're indestructible. And because I'm running the Bojack engine as well. My board is oftentimes actually going to be quite full. So the reality bender Janembas couldn't come in for one cost. Because they require you to have a clear board and your opponent to have some battle cards out on the board. Uh, so I figured this was probably better to run in this given deck. Um, I would maybe consider upping this to 3, but 2 worked out just fine. Um, you don't need to turbo mill them down, you already have your Bojack cards doing that for you. With the blue yellow arrival Bojack and the yellow negate Bojack. And your leader is just going to slowly mill them to death. The main thing you need to worry about is being able to stall out the game long enough to survive. Um, and then for some of the extra cards... I'm just running standard blue stuff really, like 4 D Magic, uh, 4 Senzu Bean, and then 1 Chilled Army Reinforcement. This lineup is fine. I was considering cutting Senzu Bean down to 3, um, because oftentimes you don't really need it. Um, you mostly use it for the plus 5k on your leader. The untap doesn't come up all that much, but I just stuck with 4, I, did, I couldn't find any other cards that I wanted to up ratios of, so 4 Senzu Bean was fine for me really, and it's really really strong against aggro decks of course, um, and then it can be used aggressively against control decks that will outpace you, uh, so you can just use it to start untapping energy and maybe playing some Bojack stuff down. So that worked out fine, I'd maybe consider upping the Chilled's Army Reinforcements to 2 copies, uh, this card is really good, I'm a massive advocate for all of the cards that uh, that came out like this where it's like this card and then homicidal clones and testing the opposition i really love all of those cards so i'd maybe consider upping that to two but one worked out just fine and then for the last card it's just the scr it's heroine's lineage this is really the only scr you can run in the deck i think um it's not bad i mean it, it kind of helps you against aggro and if your opponent goes for big kill swings you can just take the card um, it's, it's just good. It kind of acts as another pseudo negate, if you want to call it that. Um, but it allows your opponent to make more misplays during the negate timer. Because your opponent can full combo in and then have their battle card stolen. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the deck profile. That's the deck I played, uh, during, well, I played it in the second game of my best of three match in the fight night event. Um, I'll be uploading some commentary over my games of the Fight Night event, as well as probably a deck profile on the Sinzeno deck that I played um, later in the week. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the deck profile. I would definitely recommend testing this deck out. Um, it's it can seem kind of boring to play at times because most of your time, most of your turns are just swinging with leader and passing. But if you really like a control style deck or a mill style deck, and you really like um, just trying to survive and play in your opponent's turn only, then I definitely recommend trying this deck out. I've thought that I'd get very bored during my game of playing it, but I actually enjoyed the deck quite a lot. Um, but I am a very, very avid control slash nil player, so I can, I can definitely see why people wouldn't enjoy it. But yeah, I definitely recommend testing this deck out. Uh, play around with the ratios, of course. You don't want to just copy and paste my deck into untap and start playing. You want to tinker the deck to your own style but um test out the deck hope you enjoyed the video if you did like comment subscribe all of that good stuff um 
check out the Facebook page and the Discord. I'll have links to everything in the description below if you want to check anything out. But yeah, um, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a good day and a good time testing out Janemba.